Meanwhile, there's no question who will be the man under center at Maryland. Talia Tungavailoa showed flashes of brilliance last season in Mike Loxley's wide open offense. And while the Alabama transfer certainly had moments of inconsistency, his upside has the Terps awfully excited for the immediate future. Tungavailoa averaged more than 250 yards per game through the air last season, the most by any Maryland quarterback in the last two decades. First-year offensive coordinator Dan Enos has seen enough to know the big playability is there as long as Talia takes care of the little things. Consistency and performance is something that we've talked a lot about, and I think that really starts with his fundamentals. Um, his drops, his pocket posture, his eyes, um, all the little things um, that will make him a more disciplined, I think, more consistent player. He's got a tremendous work ethic. He's very talented. He's a, he's. He's not only talented as a passer, he's, a, he's an extremely, extremely athletic runner as well. So quarterback run game and all these different things he brings to the table. But we've got to get him to play just very, very disciplined, very sound. And that starts with his techniques and fundamentals. Talia, Rakeem, Dante. They may be mononymous names only in College Park, but the superstar potential of Tungavailoa, Jarrett, and Demas could soon make them all national name brands. Of course, that requires Maryland's offense to also reach its full potential, which is the clear and present focus of the Terps' best players. Pleased to be joined by Rec Kim. Jared, how are you today? I'm doing great. Can't complain. It's a hot one out there today. How are the legs? Uh, they're doing well. Uh, they're tired, but I got to get ready for tomorrow. So. Tell me, what are some of the things that this offense has been focusing on this summer? Uh, really try to get like timing together with Leah. Really take that next step as an offense and as a receiver group. Really try to come together as one to... Whoever gets, nobody matter, nobody cares who really gets the, the glory or not. It's just about we're all trying to reach this one goal, and that's the win. Really talented. You mentioned it's a really talented wide receiver room. Right. How do you guys compete? Uh, me and Demons, we have this little thing where it's like every day in practice, it's like whoever scores the most touchdowns, the loser has to do three air squats. So that kind of keeps us going mentally and really physically. How have you seen your quarterback mature? Uh, he's really taking the role as like the alpha dog for the offense and as a team really he comes in goes to work every day and people see that so they want to they want to be a part of it i've got to get your take on this it's a beautiful facility right what does it mean to have a facility like this now to be able to work out in now uh, it means the people that came before us really invested into the program into the school so that means it's really time to give back well thanks a lot for your time have a great year thank you Ohio State faces Maryland early in the conference season this year, part of a brutal stretch for the Terps in October. The man who will lead Maryland into that monster of a schedule, standing by with Dave Revson. Pleased to be joined by the head coach of the Terrapins, Mike Loxley. Lox heading into year number three here. How would you characterize where you are in the building process? You know what, I feel like we're right where we need to be from an expectation standpoint within the program. We've been able to upgrade our depth uh, we felt like we've upgraded the talent level. Uh, we've been able to balance the roster off numbers-wise to be able to practice, develop our team the way we need to. So I feel like we were right where we're on schedule. Um, you would think because we didn't get to take full advantage of last year with only playing five games, we'd be a little behind. But I've been really pleased with where we are. What are the areas of the team you're most pleased with right now? Well, the depth we've been able to, to build and recruit to on the defensive line, uh, that's kind of been an Achilles heel for us. We were very thin there, and we've been able to get some of that answered through recruiting the last couple of cycles. Uh, I love the way we're being developed there in our defensive backfield. We've got some young, talented players. Uh, so the defensive side of the ball, which, as we like to say, you win championships with good defense. I feel like we've taken those necessary steps on that side of the ball. And, and then again, I like our skill. Two new coordinators, but both guys that you are familiar with from your career arc. How have you been able to integrate both of them? Yeah, it's been great and easier than normal because of the familiarity of working with Dan at Alabama, where we worked really well and did some great things together on the offensive side of the ball. And then, you know, Brian Stewart, we were together here at Maryland the last time. Maryland went to back-to-back -back bowl games when we first joined the Big Ten. And both those guys know who I am kind of as a person and as a coach, which makes the transition easier. As I've said before, you know, I learned from my last stop that even though you make changes at the coordinator position, that the system won't change. The, the guys coming in learn what we do, but then they're able to add to it as well as call it to their personality. And both those guys are hell of, hell of a coaches, uh, great, great leaders, great teachers. 
Yeah, that last stop had a little bit of turnover <laughs> from year to year, and yet it always seemed to work out fairly well. Yes, it did. Uh, let's talk about Leah. Uh, Tonga Bailoa now heading into his second year as a starter, although obviously, look, last year was such an abbreviated year, and of course he had some issues in terms of being able to, to stay on the field at all times. So where have you seen him in terms of taking the biggest strides? You know, I think his biggest strides comes from the leadership piece of it as the quarterback. You know, when he came here, he came right in the middle of a pandemic. He moved here in June after finishing up down at Alabama. Uh, we had so many restrictions and isolations where we couldn't go out. And at the quarterback position, it's all about uh, developing a chemistry with the players on the offensive side of the ball, if not the whole team. And because he wasn't afforded that opportunity because of the pandemic, you know, it took a while for that chemistry to get there. And then, you know, he missed the game last year, the end of the season with COVID. So I think the biggest strides he's made uh, comes from just the relationships that he's been able to develop, the trust that these guys have in him because they know he's got the talent and the skill. There's a lot of belief in him as one of our leaders of our team. You mentioned the improvement on the defensive line is pretty evident being out there. Both lines of scrimmage, I think, have been challenging for Maryland historically during its time in the Big Ten. You said you think defense is coming along. What about on the other side? Yeah, you know, on the offensive line, I thought we made some strides last year with guys like Jalen Duncan taking a big step from his red shirt freshman year to redshirt sophomore. Uh, Spencer Anderson moving into a starting role, which both those guys anchor us. Uh, we were able to go answer some questions with some junior college transfers, being, being able to bring in uh, Jahari. Uh, Jahari coming in as the center for us where he played some guard and then Eric Harris coming in as well so we have some players there maybe not the depth like we would normally have or the depth that we maybe have on the defensive side of the ball and those are some of the things we've got to kind of continue to recruit to to build that side. We got a chance to look around the facility it is spectacular how does this help you? Well I think one it helps with the players in our program and I say this a lot you know, with these new rules, the transfer portal and then instant eligibility, the number one recruit that you got to take care of and you need to be able to, to secure is the guys in your program. And when you build a building like the Jones Hill House, a $200 million facility, uh, it's very player centric. It has all the bells and whistles, uh, which give each and every player in our program a chance to develop themselves uh, to be the best version of themselves. So to me, it helps with that piece. You know, because one of the worst things can happen is to continue to lose players in your program, and and this building gives us that. It also affords and shows that there's been a commitment made to football, and maybe something that hadn't been done around here in quite some time. So, really excited about the facility. Great to see the commitment that our supporters and our administration have made to football. I'll end with this, Locks. How do you define success for this team this year? You know what? We say success is our production being greater than or equal to our expectation. And we've got pretty high expectations going into this season. And our, our players really believe. I see the player-led culture really starting to show up and when we practice and the development of this team. I think things uh, look good. As we like to say, TBIA, the best is ahead. <laughs> Mike Loxley, thanks a lot. Great to see you, Coach. Thanks, Dave. You want big play receivers? Maryland has them rostered up in droves. Jay Sean Jones, Dante Demas, Raheem Jarrett, Brian Cobbs, all ranked among the top 13 pass catchers conference-wide in yards per reception last season. That receiver room is one of two Maryland position groups grabbing the attention during our training camp tour. After a steamy day here in College Park, watching the Terps go through their paces, <laughs> Big takeaways, Howard, and it's obvious there are a couple really talented position groups here. Let's start on the offensive end. The wide receiver group, uh, top to bottom, I mean, that is a excellent room. <laughs> yeah, probably one of the best in the country, at least. That's what their offensive coordinator, uh, Coach Enos, believes. And keep in mind, he was at Alabama where they produce first-rounders on a regular basis. But this is a group that has a lot of talent, talking about being able to take the top off the, off the, uh, off the defense, and, and this is a team that will be able to do that. Yeah, they returned 95% of their receiving yards from last year. And again, 
you look at this group and there's so many playmakers. Yeah. And what I really like about the offense is they're making a concerted effort. Let's get the ball into the hands of Rakim Jarrett in space. Get it to Dante Bemis. So not only do they have good players, but it seems like they're putting them in position to succeed. And I think that's the important part. They're putting defenses in really difficult positions. I like to call it they're putting them in conflict. So no matter what they do, they can't be right. So when this offense is executing at a high level, they're going to be hard to stop. So what about on the other side, the secondary really improved by leaps and bounds last year. I mean, this ended up being a top 15 yeah. pass efficiency defense in the nation, and there's no reason to think they can't replicate that this season. We brought in a new defensive coordinator with Coach Stewart, and he'll be able to come in and really not really make adjustments, but really has tailored his system to what they were already doing. So that's going to be important. But you talk about that secondary, the length is what really stands out. There's not a guy back there that's not 6'1 or, or above. So they have long arms. They're able to defend the ball, and they all want to be able to tackle. Issue on defense is can you stop the yeah. run? been an ongoing issue for them during their time in the Big Ten. Looks like they made some improvements up front it, it on D as well. Very active. But again, no question, this will be a very good secondary.